the first block we're going to work on is the toadstool block, which is pretty straightforward, but I have a little tip that I wanted to share with you that'll make doing the corners on the top of the toadstool block a little bit easier. My first tip, however, is when you cut vegetables for dinner, move your thumb before you use the knife. So I apologize for this big white bandage on my thumb, but it's, uh, it's got to stay there for a few more days. So first thing we're going to do um, is put these little squares in the top corners. Now in my instructions, I say to draw a diagonal line on these and they're pretty small and there's a lot of them and it's fairly tedious. So I do not draw them myself. What I do instead is I put masking tape on my sewing table here. Now, if you don't have a sewing table, then this would just be your, um, the bed that goes around your actual sewing machine. But if you line up the masking tape so you can still see your uh, stitch dimensions on your throat plate, and then you put your tape and then pull it all the way back to the end of your table or the end of your, your tray that comes with your sewing machine. I've cut here and here and here so that I can remove these pieces when I need to either change my sewing machine or access underneath my throat plate. So then I took my ruler and I lined it up with the needle and drew a line so that I know where my stitching line is gonna be when I sew. This, is, this line here is lined up with my needle. And why you do that is so that when you are sewing a diagonal line, you place your needle on the point and you line up this point with this line. And then you know you're sewing a straight line. So I'm just going to take that off there for now. And then just sew along here. And there you go, there's your straight line. You didn't have to spend time drawing a diagonal line. Now there is, um, a spot here where you can't have the tape just because it gets into the way of the other function of the machine. Um, but by that point, you can see the point that you're going to and it's pretty easy to keep a straight line. So I'm going to show you again on this side. And there we go. So that saved you a whole bunch of time on that block. The next block we're going to work on is the heart block and these are all the pieces that you need. You've got two one and a half inch um, of the white fabric, two one and a half by two and a half of the heart fabric, one and a half by two and a half of the background, two two and a half inch squares and the bottom of the heart block there. So what I wanted to show you here was again to do with diagonal lines. So the first one we're gonna put on is on the corner here. So this is gonna be this portion of the heart. So I'm just gonna take this over here and using my guide on my tape, just so along. And there's my first corner. Now, I don't have my cutting board here, so I'm just gonna cut that and quickly press it and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've pressed the square back along the seam line and that points this, um, prepares that section of the top of the heart block. So the next piece you'll need is your one and a half by two and a half fabric one rectangle. And in the instructions, it says to place it on the right side of the fabric uh, nine, one and a half by two and a half inch rectangle and draw a diagonal line from the top left corner to a spot one and a half inches down the right side of the rectangle. Now, that one and a half inches is the place where the um, 
fabric one rectangle and the fabric nine rectangle cross. So instead of drawing that diagonal line like we talked about, I'm just going to mark with my Frixion pen, which does not is not permanent. You just have to iron it to get, make it disappear. So I'm just going to then move that over so that the edges are lined up. Go to my sewing machine here, stick my needle in at the top point, and that is where I'm sewing to. So because that is the one and a half inch mark down the right side of the fabric one rectangle. And then I just make sure that that spot stays on my drawn line. And then I can just cut that off and press this back and I will do that and be right back. Okay, the next step on this block is to take this one and a half by two and a half inch fabric nine rectangle and place it on the right end of the fabric one rectangle. So this time we want it to bend this way. So the instructions require you to draw a diagonal line from the bottom left corner to a spot one and a half inches up the right side of the fabric one rectangle which is going to be that point there where the end of the fabric one rectangle and the fabric nine rectangle cross. So I'm just going to make a little line there like I did before. Move this over so it's in line with the bottom rectangle. Oops. And then I'm going to sew from that spot down to the bottom corner. So this time the bottom corner is lined up with the line on my masking tape. And then there's the next part of the heart top done. So all you need to do now is put the piece on the end in the same method as we did for this one. Now I just wanted to show you too, this is the bottom of the heart. So this is the fabric nine uh, three and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. And I'm going to take one of my two and a half inch fabric one squares, place it in the bottom, and then I'm going to sew from there to there. And I'm not going to use draw a line, I'm just going to use the guide on my sewing machine. So here we go again. And there we have the bottom of the heart. So just wanted to uh, show you that because it's much faster than doing everything by drawing everything out and that just makes your project go a little bit quicker and I think uh, makes it a little bit more enjoyable. This is the flower block and it uh, uses fabric three and four or it uses fabric six and seven which are the yellow colored fabrics and I just wanted to point out too for this block you can also use your guide on your sewing machine to do your corners. So this, these are the two petal squares that are in pairs around the sides of the flower like I've done up here. And then you would take your small squares at the top again and using the guide on the sewing machine to do your diagonal lines for the tops of these ones, as well as for the center of the flower, which has the four squares of the petal fabric. Let me put them so they're right side together. And using your guide on your sewing machine again, do your diagonal lines without having to draw the lines. The next block we're going to discuss is the tree block, which you see all the time in a lot of my patterns anyway, but it definitely is a block that comes up a lot. Um, and I wanted to show how you can use the tape on your sewing machine also to avoid dry, drawing diagonal lines for these blocks as well. So nothing really different from what I've already showed you, but here's the top piece. And then we're going to take the background fabric, which is fabric one, put it on the right side, and then sew from there to there 
Now, because the uh, top fabric is quite light compared to the bottom fabric, I can actually see where the edge of that fabric is without having to move it. So I'll just draw my line there. And so along to that mark in the bottom right corner. I'm done. And that's just way faster than drawing lines. I am now going to show you the two methods of applique which are described in the pattern. The first method is the fusible method. So you trace your shape onto the fusible web. And in this particular case, when I use the light steam seam 2, there's a yellow grid on the top here. And that's the side that you draw on. Then I cut out the shape so that there's a border around where the drawn line is so that when I fuse it to the back of the fabric, I can cut along the edge of the pat the template shape. And when I flip it over, I'll have the exact size of the shape that I need for the pattern. The second type is the freezer paper method. In this case, I have drawn the freezer uh, the template shape onto freezer paper and cut it along the line rather than leaving an edge on the paper. And then when I, I take my iron and I just press it onto the fabric, there's a plastic coating on the back of the freezer paper that will just stick to the fabric. It doesn't damage the fabric and you can pull the top off at any time and you can reuse that piece too if you need to. So then you trace it out, or so pardon me, you cut it out along the edge so that you have an overhanging edge. And then what you do is you take your liquid basting glue, and this, uh, in this case I'm using the Roxanne glue baste it, um, but there are lots of different um, types of basting glue on the market to use. And then you put a line of the glue along the edge of the fabric, and I'm gonna use my awl, my clover awl, just to press that over along the edge of the template shape so that when I'm done, I will have turned all that edge around and it will be at the back of the shape, just like it is here. So there's the finished head that I've already done for the other bunny. Now, what I want to show you as well, I'm just gonna rub that glue off there, what I want to show you is a new method that I uh, came upon while doing this project, which I think is now going to be my go-to method. And what you do for this method is a combination of the two uh, products. So you're gonna put the fusible web on, the back of the shape. Oops, let me get this off there this time. This thumb is getting in the way. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the back of the shape, just like that. Iron that on. And then I have the freezer paper on the front. And then what I'm going to do is take the extra piece of paper off the back of the fusible web. And instead of using basting glue to turn that over, I have got my mini clover iron and I'm just going to use the edge of the template as my guide and then just iron this to the background. And it is faster Although you do have to be careful because once you've ironed it down, it's going to stay there. Okay, so you do the edge like that and you just go all the way around. Okay, I've got to go in this direction. It's easier for me being right-handed but then it makes for a really great 
smooth, finished edge around your shape. And rather than continuing that, I'm going to show you I've done this method with this piece. This is the, the body of the partial rabbit. And you can see there's this really nice edge all the way around, totally finished. I haven't finished this edge because this is the edge that gets caught in the seam. But when you turn it over, you can see that the, um, oops, that's just coming undone there a little bit. You can see that the edge is turned to the back and all this area here is now fusible web. So that when I place this, on the background, all I have to do is use my iron to press it in place. With the freezer pe paper method, in order to adhere this to the background, I need to put small dots of liquid basting glue around here and place it on the background. But there's always the chance that when you're machine quilting, that this part is going to uh, bunch or catch up unless of course you cut away the back of the background and then that won't happen but with this method you don't have to worry about it moving at all because the fusible will have it in place it won't move when you're quilting and the edge is finished and is not going to unravel when you launder your piece so to me this has become my new go-to option so it, either, you know, one of the three methods will work just depending on what you're most comfortable with. Um, the least finicky, of course, is the fusible web with the unfinished edges. And then I would say this new method with the fusible web on the back and using a little mini iron. Don't use a big iron because you're going to burn your fingers. Um, and then the one that requires the most practice would be with the basting glue. Here's a tip for this piece of the partial bunny, which goes on the left border, or it gets lined up with the left border of this row. Um, as you can see in the picture, it's very tiny here. And um, the instructions require whether you use the freezer paper method or the fusible method or the combination method that I uh, showed um, to leave a quarter inch along this edge here so that this piece actually will look like this so uh, it has a better join and it's not doesn't have this little flimsy little join here where that uh, part of the rabbit's foot sticks out uh, so i just wanted to show you that so you have an idea of what it looks like uh, when the piece is completed and as you can see i've taken all these pieces and i've lined them up with the edge, the raw edge of the fabric. So once these are attached to the background, when I sew uh, this piece into the quilt, that edge there is gonna be caught in the seam line. So you'll just see a little bit of the, the bunny's face and uh, the bunny's leg. As another tip, I like to keep my applique piece, background piece, as small as possible when I am finishing the edges of the applique shapes, just because it's a little bit easier to work with or with your sewing machine if you're not having to maneuver a very large piece or, for example, the entire quilt. So I will not join this row to the rest of the quilt until I have stitched, done my decorative stitching, adhered these to the background and done my decorative stitching around all the bunny pieces.